This is the walkthrough video for PCT Season 23, Round 1, Senior, Question 10, T-Stitch. So we're given um, a size of a grid, and we're also given some stitching patterns. And we want to print out a T um, using the information that we're given, and it should look something like this. And um, we want to just like go through these stitching patterns and loop through them. OK, so first off, let's just take in our number um, like that. And let's also take in our pattern like that. Now, one thing I have noticed in the constraints, and you should always look at the constraints because it can, it can really help you. And it says the grid size will um, be a maximum of 39 and the pattern string will be a maximum of 50. And that's great. Like these two numbers are absolutely tiny. Like for a computer, these two numbers are basically like a zero. <laughs> like they're, they're, they're tiny, which means we can have a really, really, really inefficient code. And we're still going to get all five points because, well, because these numbers are so small that even if our code runs three times as slow as a good code, it's still going to be so ultra fast that we're going to get all, all five points, hopefully. Um, so let's do that. Uh, so what we can do is we can print off our first line um, already. And what I'm going to do, and this is where the inefficient bit kicks in, but it's, it's, it's helpful for us, right? It's inefficient for the computer to run, but it's efficient for us to write the code because writing the code is way easier if, if, if we do it this inefficient way. So we're actually just going to take our pattern and we are going to multiply it by like a, a load of timers, basically. Um, <laughs> so let's take pattern and we're going to multiply itself um, by, I don't know, let's take a big number, um, 500. <laughs> Obviously, that, uh, that's probably way bigger than we need, but that's good. We want a bigger number than we need. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to have an index that starts off as zero, and that's going to reference um, the first stitching pattern in our pattern string. And we're going to just keep increasing that index um, pointer, and we're just going to refer to that uh, point in the pattern. So instead of bothering to actually try and figure out how to loop through the pattern, we're just going to repeat the pattern so many times that we don't need to loop through it. We can just continue through the pattern. And we repeated the pattern so many times that we're never going to reach the end. And so we never have to bother loop looping through. OK, so first off, let's print off um, whatever we need to print off. Um, and so I, I guess gonna, it's going to start off at num, right? Because we're going to use the first um, i or the first num characters in our pattern to print off the first row, because the first row is always going to be full for, the, for this T pattern. And so what I mean by that is we're going to print um, pattern and we're going to slice the string and we're going to go from zero all the way up into um, I or num. Like at this point, they're both the same. So let's just do I. So we're going to go all the way up until I. Um, and that way we should be able to deal with, well, that line of code basically just prints out our first line of our outputs. Um, and at this point, our pointer i is now set to the correct thing as well because of what we did on line six, um, which means that we can kind of just keep i rolling on. So now we want to print off a load of more rows. Um, and each row, um, well, the amount of rows that we have remaining is equal to our original input minus one because we've already printed off the first row. Um, and so we can just have a for loop. And so um, for underscore, and underscore is just a way of saying, I want to run a for loop, but I don't really care what um, this is like usually we do i here but i don't really care what it is so i'm just gonna use underscore just to say i don't really care so for i in range um num minus one because you've already printed off that first row now we want to print off um this row uh, which is going to be a full stop plus a certain thing in our pattern plus another full stop but of course we now need to like actually <laughs> do this properly so how many full stops are there going to be at the start well if we take our num and divide integer divided by two, then we get the amount of full stops we had before and after. And again, looking at the screen constraints, we're told that we'll be given an odd number, which means that integer division by two will always, always, always get us the right number of full stops. For example, five integer, five integer division by two is two. And so we have two full stops, then the central character, which is the stitch, and then another two full stops. And that makes sense, because you have two plus two, which is four, and that final fifth character in this row it is representing this middle um, stitch. So we want to print off that full stop um, as many times as um, num inch division by two. And same thing for the final full stop because it's all symmetrical. So we want to print that time at that many, we want to print that off as many times as num inch, inch division by two. Now, what's our central pattern stitch going to be? Um, well, because we've just used i, we're basically just printing off uh, pattern i which is kind of like the hack that we're using. Um, but all we also need to keep in mind that we want to increment i by one every single time we use it. Because every time we use it, we now need to move on to the next uh, pattern in our stitch. 
um, and so we draw an increase by one. And this should hopefully be um, a relatively nice, easy way to get a five out of five compared to all of the other ways you could have done it. And you may have noticed with some of these problems, how easy the problem is depends on the approach you take and the way you decide to implement the code. Because you can have like pretty short and simple, straightforward code like this, but the code itself is simple only once you've done the thinking of what's the best way to code this. Only once you've looked at the constraints and realized that you can do a certain inefficient solution and then you think of the inefficient solution and then you implement it, which is usually the easy bit. And yep, that got us five out of five. So that rounds off uh, round one. And if you're doing PCT this year, good luck for round two. Hopefully you get in.